Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today is a day for routine maintenance. I'm out with the trimmer now, and I haven't trimmed this lower dry lot yet this year, and I probably should have. I have this curly dock. This stuff produces a zillion seeds. Um, it's poisonous to horses, allegedly. You know, that's what you'll read in a book, but they won't eat it, so it doesn't really matter anyways. But, as you can see, like this stuff over here, it can get pretty big and it can take over an entire dry lot. So, I gotta whack this down. I've been going around with the weed whacker, did all the yard stuff. I did up by the trees, along the road up there. This, that, and the other thing, I can't get it all in one pass. So it's like every other time I go with the weed whacker, I'll get something different. So I'm gonna start by getting rid of that big old common mull in there uh, so it doesn't reproduce. It's too late on all this curly dock. Better yet, I think I will just spray in here. Because I want to keep the grass. They can eat the grass. And if I come in here with 2,4-D and grass fertilizer mixed, weed and feed, that'll get some of this grass a little bigger and get rid of some of this other stuff in here. All right, that's the plan. But I do have to get this fire started right here. This is the clippings from the vineyard from the last couple days and earlier in the year. So it's a big stack of dried out shoots and it's gotta go. We're gonna have a lot more coming, so I don't want that pile getting monstrous. And the wind is in the exact right direction right now, so it's not gonna blow the flames into the electrical stuff over here. So let me get this burned and then I'll move on with the trimmer. All right, I got this torched up. Hopefully this doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance because I'd like to move on and just let this burn out. But I'm going to have to stay here for a little bit and watch it. So we'll watch this burn down a bit and then head out and get some more stuff done. Alright, now for the second watering of the day. This is the annual wildflower seeds that I planted a couple days ago. Oh, maybe three days ago. I've been watering this four times a day. And I have 250 feet of hose to get out here to the very end of the seed here. So I don't know how long this takes a day. I'm going to guess it only takes maybe 15 minutes per time. But it's a bit of work. I'll be really glad when this stuff comes up. Or a rain. We don't have rain for four days, which I guess is pretty good. I don't want the seeds to wash away. I'd like to have little sprouts before we get a good rain. And then at least once a day, I water this prairie drop seed. It all depends on how hot and how windy it is. Today, it's just very windy. It's not real hot, so I'm just going to water them once, possibly twice. It looks like a lot of this stuff is taking, like it's doing fine, but it just does not get big very quick, which kind of sucks. All right, when I get right over there, i got to show you what I do with this hose. When I'm done watering this part here, to set the hose down, run over here, and I have a shutoff valve, so I don't have to drag this monstrous hose all the way back to get the rest of this watered. If I could just do this, there we go. So I shut this off, and I need two hands now, like that. Take the hoses apart and then gotta go back here and grab the spray nozzle. It'd be nice if I had two of them, but we have 
a definite shortage of spray nozzles around here. They are so crappy and even the expensive ones are just garbage. I wish an American manufacturer would make a good spray nozzle that's going to last years. It'd be worth the money. We spent, I think it was $25 on, on what we thought was a decent spray nozzle. And that one broke after a year. All right, and then I'm back to it. Got to set it on shower. So at a minimum, I have to get the gravel where the wildflowers are planted. And then a couple times a day I do these as well. But the gravel is my focus. This is another part of my day. My cat Maisie demands that I pet her for oh anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour and she's a semi outdoor cat so I don't see her all that much so I give her a pet while we're kneeling right here these are the pale purple cone flowers I planted last year this right here back in there and right here. They're really bizarre looking. Kitty, come here. Cat, come here. They're really bizarre looking. I haven't seen the flowers yet. This will be the first time they flower, but that long crooked stem up to the flower is really interesting looking. These are endangered in Wisconsin, or at least they were when I planted them. I think there was an update to uh, like protect it or something last I looked. But they're a pretty cool addition to the garden. Alright, I'm going to finish petting this cat and get the rest of this watered. My blueberry's not looking too great this year. It's got a ton of blueberries on it, but the leaves are much smaller and it's got some dead stuff up on the top. I hope this isn't dying out. Yeah, it's just really open. This used to be just super full. Hopefully it's not the soil. There's that cat. Our soil here is a bit alkaline and blueberries really like an acid soil. So this entire area is amended down. Oh, it's about 20 inches. This, this is well over here. And then I planted in a raised bed. And this is all bark. It's bark mulch, which is acidic. Uh, peat moss and what else? Pine needles? But it's growing in a real acidic medium. But I don't know if that's failing or what. So I'm going to have to get in here and weed and treat it with some acid and see if that perks it up a bit. All right, I'm about half done with my watering. I gotta get up to there and then have lunch and get back at it. My fire is pretty much out over there, but I gotta go check on that as soon as I'm done watering. This first clematis here is not doing very well. The other one is all the way, oh, I should have showed that, it's all the way to the top of the trellis and this one is like just starting and it's in really sorry shape. This one had way more roots than the other one so a lot of root damage. I'm hoping it don't die. These like really cool feet which means they like moist cool soil so I got to get some mulch around these real quick. I think Cindy bought me some yesterday, but I haven't checked yet. All right, I got to get my hose unstuck and finish this up. Came to check on the fire before lunch. It looks like it's going to burn cigar-like for a couple hours, which is great. Let it burn out. I got to get in here into the blue stem. Well, this is actually mixed prairie grass now. 
I started by planting pure little blue stem here and as I weeded I popped in some seeds here and there and now it's little blue stem Indian grass big blue stem and out front we have a few different kinds of rye and then little blue stem again this is the third summer for this garden and it's starting to look really nice I only have to weed a bit here and there throughout the summer I just pulled out some yellow foxtail and at some point there's not going to be any yellow foxtail seed left in here this was all yellow foxtail this spring so I sprayed it and got rid of it but now some other seed is popping up so I'll have to kind of watch it that's little blue stem that's little blue stem so I'll have to selectively weed in this little area and then go around and pull out the foxtail the foxtail looks like this. It's very flat down by the roots. It has really poor roots um, and it grows really fast. So, and it's uh, a different color than all these native grasses. So if I see some lightly colored yellowish grass, all I do is follow it down to the root and feel if it's flat like that. And then if, it, if I give it a slight tug and it pulls out, then it's foxtail. If you try that with the little blue stem, it will not budge because this stuff has 10 foot long roots. Okay, lunchtime. I got a spray 2,4-D in here and elsewhere today. And I already trimmed the entire upper part this morning before I started filming. I was gonna do a short film on tensioning the wires in the vineyard. But I thought, geez, I might as well just add that to my daily chores and film the whole thing. And I may start doing that as a regular feature because I miss sometimes two days out of the week where I'm doing, trying to catch up on all the chores because I was filming other stuff. So maybe I'll do that. I'll just have a chore day and uh, film all the miscellaneous chores that I do. The ducks like this pool because it's got cleaner water in it. Natalie just changed the water. She changes their water too, but they crap in it, so it gets dirty pretty quick. Yeah, I can pet you one more time, honey. I gotta get in and eat. Crazy ducks. Okay, time to eat. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Just finished lunch. Now I'm taking Izzy on her afternoon walk. Then I got to go back and check on that fire that I started earlier. Then I have to, I have to drag some logs from the end of this road, drag them up to here. And then I have a few logs on our back road that I need to drag to the lower dry lot. Both are just getting put in some burn piles. I'm getting real close to the end of the, the harder maintenance, the spring maintenance. And pretty soon we'll be getting into the summer projects and hopefully build a couple things. I'm going to be trying to set up the wood shop pretty soon and that'll be a really cool project. When I get back after I pull those two trees and mix up my 2,4-D I gotta spray all this stuff. Ugly looking, eh? This is touch me not. I, I was thinking it was pigweed last year but this is an invasive species and the whole back, this is the neighbor's land they got a ton of it there, but I sprayed earlier and got rid of a lot of it here. But I got to go through here. We got some garlic mustard right there and a bunch of other stuff. So I got to go through. Uh, there isn't really all that much, but I got to get this uh, touch-me-not 
towards the back there, get that sprayed. Otherwise, this is looking pretty good here. Oh, there's a deer. Well, that was kind of cool. You rarely have the camera out for that. Remember last year, a couple times, I had some red-tailed hawks and eagles and stuff, you know, come fly right over me. And, of course, I don't have the camera running at the time. Okay, so go pull some logs. Oh, I think I'll show you, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff I did earlier. Yeah, I think I'll make this a regular, maybe on Mondays or something. Early in the week, I'll do my, get all my chores done and get it on film because this is a vlog after all. All right, I'm going to throw a couple more times for her and then get back to work. This is what I was doing earlier this morning. I just made paths up to each tree so I can water. That one has no leaves on it, but I haven't given up on it yet. He did this out in the field. He cut this a couple days ago and he just put it all in rows today. He did that while I was at lunch. And actually that one had leaves before, I think. I have it all on film. I thought this one was the one without leaves. Oh, who knows. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, they don't look that good, but maybe they'll make it. All right, now we will go pull them logs out. Almost forgot. I have to water. This would be the third time today. All right, that's the first water. Now I gotta water this, those two pots, that, and then all the way down. It's about, I think it's 150 feet, 160 feet of ditch, but I'm only watering the, the gravel part where the annual seeds are. So about 15 minutes. That's the end of the watering until the next one. Decrepit garden. Look at all of my stuff. For starting fires, there's the torch. Watering the trees, trimming, also for trimming. Gas for the trimmer. This is for mixing weed and feed. This is for planting. Uh, dye for spraying. I have 2,4-D and a couple other things in here. Fertilizer. Just a ton of stuff, but this is this is what I need right now. The choke. And that's about it. I think I just need the choke and I'm gonna go prune some roots. Forgot all about that. So, here we go. All right, we have one, two, three trees back here. And this area right here needs a little more seed. You can see where I sprayed 2,4-D. All the garlic mustard is dying back. And that leaves this bare ground. The garlic mustard kind of kills things around it. But I have my big bag O seed. So I get a bunch of this perennial rye seed in there. All this stuff is perennial rye, or 90% of it. There are some prairie grasses in here. Not a lot yet, though. I don't know if you heard that or not. I had some weird kind of, uh, I think it was a bird doing some calls in the woods there. All right. I have a few other places that I gotta get seeded today as well. The ditch by the vineyard 
and around the septic tank. So when I started this video, I was already halfway done for the day. I was trimming all morning. I got back here trimmed. I got the side of the hill trimmed over here. And then the normal trimming, which is just around everything. at the crossroads here. I just got to cut out a few of these roots. I got one right there and one right there. These trees are, they should be close to dead. Oh no, I didn't tack them yet. All right, well, they, the roots still got to come out. These trees are coming out. Uh, there's going to be a burr oak there at some time, but I believe this planting from this year is just going to go south. I don't I don't know if any of them are going to live. We'll see, but I don't have a lot of faith in it. So, I'm going to take out these roots and there's one over there. The ones in the middle of the road can stay, but I got some hanging branches right there that I got to take out as well. And then I got to go drag some more logs. We're just below the buffalo grass. That's all buffalo grass up towards the top. And you can see some perennial rye. The darker green stuff is perennial rye. Buffalo grass is supposed to be pretty dark, but it's certainly not as dark as the perennial rye is. So when I toss seed, it looks like I gotta get right in here and a little bit over there as well. And then I'm getting up by the septic tank up there, the rest of this road. Got a good deal of seed to toss. But first, I got to get those trees dragged.
Yeah, I'm not going to be able to spray 2,4-D today. The sun is already getting low, and I got to get this video produced. So it'll be tomorrow. But I will be coming through this entire area. And I may just pull out the rest of this wood and put it by the road. I did this last year as well, and the wood line was right around here. And it looked just like that with all of the touch-me-not as well as the garlic mustard but most most of the garlic mustard is gone except for that big patch right in front of me but that'll go tomorrow you could tell this was a big patch of garlic mustard by how clear it is And with any luck, I'll have some really nice tall grass like that, and the garlic mustard will be history. Well, you look at that. This looks like prairie drop seed. When I planted everything earlier in the year, I pushed in a whole bunch all through here. That looks like some as well right there. Looks like I might have some grown in here. Way cool. All right, just a little way to go, and then hopefully I have enough seed to do my road. All right, my battery's getting kind of low, so I'm gonna have to hurry this up. I gotta run to town and get some gypsum for this road. I didn't get any on it yet. I've put it on twice so far. And after a couple years, this hard clay, because they dug into the side of the hill, the hard clay will loosen up and then turn into soil. And it'll be real nice here. Right back here, I gotta continue that water line and run it down and across the road. It's the gray water and the catchment for this addition. And we have a guy coming over to move some of these really big rocks that were dug out by the hydrant up there. And I'm going to have it spill out onto those rocks right over in here somewhere. So that'll be an interesting job. I got to do all the digging by hand. So I'll have to pick a, a fairly cool day after some rain so the ground's kind of loose. It'll be a decent job. All right. So if you want to see more of these chore days, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the update icon so you're notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you give the video a like and or share it, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.